everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Sewing with Stephanie. Today I'm going to share with you four sewing tips on how to work with silk charm mousse. Silk charm mousse is one of my favorite materials, but I don't use it very often because it can be very finicky and difficult to work with. So I'm here to make those silk projects a success. I recently just finished making this silk dress from fabric that I bought at Mood Fabrics, and it is a very high-end designer silk, and it came out really beautifully. So I'm going to share with you the tips that I use in order to make this dress come out as beautiful as possible. Tip number one, when cutting your fabric, traditionally we use scissors and pins. I highly, highly recommend you invest in some weights and a rotary cutter. Rotary cutters can be as cheap as $10, $15, which is actually much cheaper than a nice pair of gainer scissors. And they come in different sizes. I would get a, you know, an inch and a half, a smaller size, so you can really navigate small corners. I bought this at my local Joann's, but I'll provide a link to my favorite one on Amazon. For weights, I went to my local hardware store and got the heaviest washers that they have. These washers make it really easy and quick to lay out my fabric and then simply lay out the weights on top, making sure that I'm stretching and pulling the fabric the way that I want it to be. That way when I cut, there's no fabric lifting up off of the cutting mat, which can change the angle of your pattern pieces. Tip number two. Always, always, always finish the raw edges of your seams before attaching your pattern pieces. Regardless of what finishing technique you use, I always recommend finishing those seams first because it cuts out on any silk fraying or pulling and twisting of the silk that can happen as we move and play with the fabrics over time. Some people tend to use a basting stitch around necklines and sleeve lines. I prefer to just go in with my overlocking machine and overlock the outside of all of the pieces so that I can be sure 100% that they will not stretch and they will not fray. Tip number three, and this is really important when you're sewing, don't forget to change your sewing needle. So many times people use a their regular standard needle, whatever's already in their machine. I highly recommend you buy a silk needle for your machine, which is gonna be a smaller gauge, somewhere between the 60 and the 75 size. It'll make a much smaller hole in the silk, which can really add up over time, especially if you make mistakes. So I highly, highly recommend you change that needle before you do any sewing. And my last tip to make sewing with silk a breeze, press after every seam. I know that this can seem totally crazy, but the trick to working with silk and making it look as beautiful as the silk pieces that you see hanging in the racks and stores is pressing after every seam. You can sew two darts and then press them. Make sure you press them down, make sure they're perfect before you then sew side seams. I do this for shoulder, for the side, for everything, because that way I know that the fabric will not be pulling, it will not be hanging weird, and I can really be sure that there's the crisp, very beautiful light finish that is necessary when sewing silk. So that's it for today. I know that oftentimes people don't sew with silk because it's such a tricky fabric and they don't wanna ruin their fabric and spend lots of money on fabric that they end up ruining. So it's really, really important that you remember those four tips when you're sewing in order to make your silk projects a success. Thank you so much for following along with Sewing with Stephanie today. See you later.